Let's have a look at part one. What does it ask? What's the probability that a particular student chose neither extension one maths nor extension one English? So we're looking at the situations where we're not in these circles, right? Before we get to the actual probability, how do I write this? How do I describe someone using the language and notation I've got here who doesn't do extension one maths, doesn't do extension one English? Zachy, what do you reckon? Would you write the complement of E in union with the complement of M? Hmm. Let's contemplate this idea. Complement of E, complement of firstly, what did we agree that they mean? That's okay, no, that's right. I want to I want to consider this is the important part, right? Um, what what is this area? Complement of E. It's everyone outside of the um, outside of this circle. Do you agree with that? Yep. yep. Okay, so we know where that area is, and then this is everyone outside of the M circle, right? In fact, what I'd like you to do, maybe without worrying about the numbers, but just maybe on the side of this, right? Could you take what Zach has just suggested? And shade onto, here's our new diagram, don't worry about the numbers. We're going to call this E, we're going to call this M. Could you shade for me? Where do you think this particular set belongs? And then that will not just answer the question of yes or no, but tell us why. Okay? I'll give you a second. Draw, draw yourself up just a quick and dirty. Don't, don't put the numbers back on because we're just going to colour straight over them. Where is the union of outside E and outside M? Just have a think for a second. The union. Good, good. Okay, so let me help you out, right? I'll do them one at a time, okay? And by the way, people in, uh, who have come from, this is Lee's and I class, know this, um, but those of you who were not, maybe don't, um, colors. Colors are really helpful. They communicate a lot of things, um, unless you're colorblind. But if you are not colorblind, which is most of you, use colors to your advantage. For instance, right? Um, let's do this. Not E means everyone outside of E. So there's the E circle. So I'm going to shade in green. That's not E. You okay with that? Did I, did I cover it? Yeah. Yep, okay. So that's not E. Now I'm going to do not M. So that's this circle out here. Uh, don't want to go inside that. I want to go, there we go. Like so. Are you okay with that? My red has gone everywhere except for inside that circle of M, right? So now the union, what does union mean? We looked at intersection this morning. What does union mean? There's a word that goes with union, right? It's this or that, right? Either one is fine. So anywhere inside my terribly colored diagram, so long as there's some color on it, we would include that in this set. Is this the set that we want? It's actually not, right? What we want is, not in this circle, instead of or, we want and not in this circle, right? We want the outside stuff, right? So the way I would say that is, let's see here, okay. Think about this. What would we put? Intersect. Intersect, right? So what this means is, not just if there's a color, that's fine. I want both colors to be there. Now just have a look closely, right? You see this little sort of crescent in here? There's only a single color there. Do you agree? It's only red. Okay, so I'm like, that's, that's out. Uh, that's not going to count. I need both colors to be involved. And then there's this section right in here, which is only green. Do you see that? And I need both colors, so I'm also going to exclude that. So really, I'm getting this region on the outside. Now you can tell me what the number is. 42, thank you very much. So there's my favorable outcomes, but then we also need, and this is why we filled in the totals over there, we need our sample space. What's the sample space? 193, very good. It's everyone. Done. That's it. Okay. So at the moment, is this conditional probability? No. Not, not really yet, because we didn't have the key that will tell you, because unlike when I give you a heading and say this is conditional probability, right? When you encounter a question, the key phrase that will tell you this is conditional probability is, look at part two. It says, extension one English, where's the word? Given that, right? Or you might also say, if it is known, right? Any of these things tell you there's a condition involved. So now let's think about this probability. Extension one English, given that they chose extension one maths. So the thing that I'm interested in is extension one English. That's how I'm indicating it at the moment. What was the symbol we introduced this morning to say given that? 
Do you remember what it was? Yeah, it's just the pipe, that one vertical line, right? Like so, okay? And what's the condition that I know? Given that, look at the question, it's there. They chose extension one maths, right, very good. All right, that's what I've got. Now, hopefully you got written down early this morning. We actually have a formula for this, right? So I'm going to write the formula down. We'll get the numbers and then we'll interpret it, okay? If I remember right, what we say is it's still a fraction, right? We change the sample space, right? The sample space is diminished now. Instead of being the number of everything, 193, it's just the number of the given condition, right? That's the thing you know to be sure. So I'm going to write like that, okay? And then I say on the top, this is my favorable events, right? This also changes. Do you remember what we had up here? What was in here? We used this intersection symbol again, didn't we? Right? It's actually, it's really nice. This is one of the good things if you use this format. It's everything that was written here in exactly the same order. Okay? So it's going to be E intersect M. Like so, right? These are those particular English students. We're forgetting about the English students that don't do maths because we know that's the given condition. All right, let's have a look. E intersect M. Where's that on my diagram? It's the 29. It's the overlap, isn't it? So I'm going to write that right at the top. 29 over. And then I've got uh, the number of people in this circle, which handily I have already calculated. Where is it? Uh, it's here, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. I've already got this number, 124. And we're done. I even know I can't simplify it because 29 is prime. Okay? Are you happy with that? Do you see how we calculated it? And do you see what it means over there? Can I ask you to have a go at part three and part four without my help first? If you've got a question. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, go ahead. Why is it 124? Why is it the 124? Okay, let, let's think about this. You came a little bit later, so you guys are going to help me, right? Why is it that we change the sample space and not have it over 193? Why do we do that? Hmm. Is the constraints changed? Did you want to yeah, add into so something? Basically, yeah. Basically, you've already been told one of the you now have more. You know more, mm -hmm. so now you can cut out more. Very good. In fact, that's a really good way to summarize, right? Because you know more, you can exclude, you can cut out some of these options, right? Because you know that the person you're randomly selected is doing maths, right? Have a look on this diagram for a second. Which numbers can I erase? I can erase, well, definitely here, right? Because I'm, I'm, I'm interested in these people who've done maths. I can also erase these guys, right? It's not going to be one of these guys. It's outside the math circle. So I can pretend they don't exist. This is my new sample space. Does this make sense? So that's why I've changed the denominator. Okay. How's that question? So for B, I, um, I don't know. Why is going to be this? What's your number? Oh, okay. So you've written, Thomas has written something a bit differently. You've written, I think you said A e union? Um, union M and then all of it. Okay, so I'd like all of us to consider this for a second. Can you have a look at this with me? We're using our, our new set notation and also our complement notation, okay? Does this work? Uh, Hamza's question is, why can't I do this, right? What is E union M? What does that look like? Hmm. How would you describe it to someone? If you were telling me to shade some stuff, what would I shade? Everything that isn't in a circle. Everything, oh, hold on a second. Before we get to the complement, just, just E union M. E union M. Anything that's in E that is also in M. Anything that's in E. No, but it's E or M. Yeah, union is or, isn't it? This is the problem we encountered at the beginning, right? Let me show you. E union M goes all the way through both of our circles, right? Anyone in here, the union, I've just combined them and put them together, okay? Now, what does that bar over the top now mean? Yeah. yeah, everything that's the opposite of that. Does that describe, if I take the part that's white right now, does that describe the same as this? It looks like my diagram is that bad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yes, it does. They, they are the same, right? This white area and this multicolored area, red and green, they are the same. It's just the stuff outside of the circle. So the short answer to your question is totally fine. Just another way of thinking about the same region, okay?